Hi folks, in this tutorial we're gonna learn about caching, how to work with caching, what is caching and how to become better developers by leveraging caching. So let's get going. Why caching? Caching is very important because users are impatient. They want the data loaded as fast as possible into their mobile phones, into their browsers. When you visit a website you want the data if possible now at 0.01 milliseconds. So caching is an act of keeping data into storage and the storage could be uh, the RAM memory of a computer and allows retrieval without having to request the data from the original source and that original source can be for example a database, a huge database which some queries that you do on them takes uh, minutes to do or even more. So this is happening if the data does not change frequently. For example, a website logo or a, a website style, CSS style or JavaScript. They remain the same for days or even weeks if not more. So um, let's go ahead and see that caching is hard. So um, a person Phil Cartron which worked at Netscape uh, communication if you remember the Netscape browser said that um, there are only two hard things in computer science caching validation and naming things and why um, what he means by caching validation it means when you decide that an object is uh, should be removed from the cache um, but we will talk about this a little bit later so um, as your application grows bigger you can have multiple caching servers and you have to be take care how to sync data between them um, you need also some database knowledge to see um, what you can optimize because um, for example you want to remember in caching um, for each individual user uh, his or her preferences and the stuff can grow a lot and there are some paid solutions offered by Google, Amazon and uh, some others but let's say you don't want the, the data to be stored um, on Google server you want you're working out on a banking system and you can have that data only on your servers plus it's cheaper um, so unless you plan to invalidate the cache yourself you have uh, two options both are, are very good memcache and redis memcache is used by uh, facebook for example redis is used by twitter um, they are very good um, sort of in-memory databases that um, can be used to implement caching so we will go to memcache just because it is much simpler to work with and for our needs is more than enough so how we install and configure them for linux uh, we just write um, up to get um, update and up to get install memcached and we will also install as a plugin for um, for flask which is called flask cache which handles the connection and some uh, creates some very nice to use decorators for us and for the configuration file it's very easy to be found it's slash it at the conf so here is an example how to use uh, memcache in python directly so let's say you connect to the memcache server we have some dictionary data you can uh, set it with a time with a prefix um, and here we are testing it if it, it if it gets saved you can get the values what is the problem with this code just uh, looking at it it's very hard to read and a little bit hard to um, maintain let's say for our stuff we don't we don't want to be bothered with key prefixes and uh, 
what happens if set multi, set one, we just want a simpler approach. So um, if you remember the Python philosophy, simple is better than complex and readability counts. And a very good application for caching is to use decorators. So we will decorate our functions with just um, writing on top of them cached timeout 50 and the timeout is in seconds or we can use cached memoize I don't know how, if this is how you pronounce it but you use cached memoize in some functions that require that have some arguments so for example in this function has membership you see that there's one argument role ID but for a function that don't have any arguments you can just use cache cached so let's get going and see uh, how we can start so first of all I'm on my machine now on my Linux machine VPS and I'm gonna install memcached just remember to do up to get update at the beginning and uh, it has been already installed I can check the config file memcached.conf and here I, you see it's very very easy to read I will just set my memory to 256 compared to the standard one of just 64 and um, here I will not modify anything just remember as a security issue remember that uh, specifies IP address to listen on and this is only security measure that memcache has so I'm gonna leave it to the local server I'm gonna exit this file and uh, you start it by uh, writing service memcached start and by calling status you can see here it occupies at the moment 7.1 megabytes which is very low so let's open up a project this is how um, you import um, caching into your Python project I have simple a very simple flask application is nothing just just a hello world so let's go ahead and and uh, test it uh, it tells me it doesn't find any uh, memcache module so it didn't find because I'm I'm running it under Windows um, I didn't upload it to the server so I replace that cache type with simple instead of memcached for now so we have this web page going on see it displays uh, just a hello world and we have two functions here with two roots with cache and without cache if we call the without cache we see it will return the UTC now from date time so every time I refresh the page it will change it if I if I use a cached cached with the same absolutely same function it will see it will be cached let's put it here for five seconds and um, it will be refreshed and displayed for five seconds now when I make the request here it will go to this um, function here it will see it is in cached and would display the cached version and where is um, here for example we can render a very big web page an index page or some lists uh, some huge stuff okay so um, just remember that you can configure flask cache here and if you go to the um, if you search google for flask you can see here how you can configure it um, and for example you can replace the cache type with um, memcached uh, google app engine redis file system and other other uh, stuff and um, it's a pretty pretty nice um, add-on to flask i use it on almost all 
all my applications and I recommend that you use it too. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I'm waiting you on the next ones. Thank you very much. See you soon.